Welcome to the show, man. Well, thank you. Welcome How's your week? Oh, yeah. I am looking forward to the weekend. Yeah. I, and I just got my haircut. Did you just get your haircut? It looks good, man. Not too, long ago. Not too <laughs> long ago. Not too long ago. It looks so I good. Got a little clip. Yeah. I know. It's like... Um, in this show, we, we, we start always with some type of um, authentic self. And for me, I bought a, a, you know, a razor, shaver, clipper uh -huh. from COVID. <laughs> I, I don't know if I can go back to a barber. Yeah. <laughs> and I loved my barber and I feel so bad. It's just like we, we talk about people that are enjoying you know what it's like to work from home. I just feel bad for you know, my local barber, but I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It's a random start, but like I'm cutting my own hair. I don't know. Well, you know, if it works, it works. You know, I can't do that. I would make a total mockery of my hair if I tried that. So yeah. I can't uh, do it. How'd you get through last year? Because I think you're you're in an interesting spot. You're an adult. People depend on their paycheck. People depend on you to keep everybody calm. How did you do it? I mean, running a company during this time, not easy. So share with us you know, as someone who's a... CEO of a company, how did you get through it? You know, um, for me, we in 2018 kind of made a focus on doing more digital meetings and less traveling around the country. 2018. And yes. And Good. towards the end of 2018, wow. we did a little study of the results of doing digital meetings versus traveling coast to coast and what, you know, we were able to accomplish. So we had a shift to digital meetings online meetings and the, you know the last physical meeting i had was in february of 2020 you know literally at an office basically the way i got through it and my team got through it we're spread out throughout the country was basically meeting online like we're doing right here you know looking face to face talking back and forth it's not as good as shaking somebody's hand and so forth but it's the next best thing mind is blown first person i've spoken to in a long time that's understands how to run a company in the new media age. So my follow-up then question is, I had um, a rock star on yesterday from, from Citibank, and she was talking about how when she runs her team, she's an SVP at Citibank, she's going to bring people back into the office just to do maybe hack events or team building exercises. But her, her vision of like when we're bringing the team back to the office one or two days a week, whatever that's going to be, it's not, it's going to be for a, a specific building exercise. So, you know, advice, thoughts, how have you, how have you thought about when people do get together? Just share us. Have you thought about it? Have you talked about it? We have, you know, and a lot of it hinges on the travel restrictions, yeah. um, where we're going to go, you know, certain areas of the country are more open than others. Yep. I have a team member in Atlanta. I have a team member in Denver. I have Oklahoma city. I have Dallas. We're kind of trying to decide where we're going to meet, and it's going to be dependent on how the pandemic is going as to whether we meet up in Florida, we meet up yeah. in Tennessee, where we're going to get together. I certainly want to get together. I love being out in person with my team, but, you know, it's uh, it's difficult, obviously, right now with all the travel restrictions and things you have to do. Yeah. So You're in great cities. You're in great cities. <laughs> Any of those cities to go to, I'd meet you there. It's like I've heard people in worse cities. They, those are really fun cities. So there's a question I want to ask you about the fleet business. And I'm not sure if I'm asking it the right way. But I was fascinated by the massive ship, or is it Evergreen, Everworld, that was stuck in the canal. Mm -hmm. And butterfly effect that happened because of that. When there's a, an issue in a container ship, does that impact your business or am I, am I not connecting the two in the fleet business? Like, Walk me through how it gets to the boat, to the dock, and then is that when you guys pick up? But if the boat is all screwed up, does that, does that help you, hurt you? How do you change? How do you move? Are you following that? Like, Teach, yeah. teach us like how you think about this. Because again, what I love about this is as a CEO, you're, you need to watch global news. This stuff keeps you up at night. Again, families to feed. Right. Absolutely. It does affect the trucking industry, the rail industry, the inland maritime industry and the coastal maritime industry. You know, it affects everybody and it's such a knock on effect. Uh, so yeah, uh, picture you're a trucking company. You're planning to go to the port with okay. 15 different trucks to haul freight to okay. the other coast or inland. Yes. 
you have to adjust and a lot and what was happening was though a lot of the cargo ships were going to other ports those ports were then backing up so it is uh it is all you know kind of a nightmare really you're planning all of these things logistically and then something like that happens and it changes everything it changes where you're going to ship your trucks where you're going to pick up where you're going to you know all of it has to be changed and so i've been in trucking technology for 14 years and i had events like this that happened where i was with a fleet routing optimization company for uh 14 years and we would have to literally replan the routes for the next week on the drop of a hat and fortunately because the technology could do it 80 percent faster than a human could do it we could we could do those things you know move these trucks start make my starting point here with 45 trucks instead of 10 you know and, and do those things and so we could adjust for that but it is a total adjustment for sure so i'm fascinated by the sector you're in because it's one of the largest employers and it's also a sector that concerns me about automation we're going to kind of go through that and, and fundraising and all, all these questions so in addition to the regular news that you would consume what other news do you look at that could inf impact your day-to-day, -day, right? Because again, you, you're in this interesting space that events that might not make it to the front page of the New York Times impact you. So like, mm -hmm. what, are, what are you watching? What trends do you look at? What keeps you up at night on, on like some of these global hiccups or global, I don't know what you want to call it, but events? So we, uh, we work in the fuel economy area with our business intelligence platform. You know, we're helping companies uncover ways to improve fuel economy. So two big things I look at. The price of fuel is a big one, right? Every week I'm looking at that. And then secondly, what's called the tender rejection rate, which is basically showing you the demand on trucking versus how many uh, bids are getting declined because they want more money. So the tender rejection rate and the fuel price are two of the big ones that I'm looking Got it. at every week. And, and yeah, that's perfect. I just want to go back one more thing to tender. I, in case people don't know the language, it, walk us through just that vocabulary, but and just walk right. us through those those words. Because I know we're technical, we understand technical terms, but these are industry specific terms that I just want to make sure everyone understands. Because sure. I love that tender, the tender rejection. So what happens when you're creating a load as a shipper? You need to ship, let's just say, 5,000 t-shirts to a retail okay. center, a distribution center. Okay. So you put a bid out on hauling that freight from point A to point B. Okay. That's considered a tender. There are load boards where people can go and say, yes, I want that load and I want to take it at that price and I'll do that load. Got it. I'll, I'll take that freight. Well, when you have a high tender rejection rate, that means those tenders are getting rejected because the money is not good enough to haul the freight. And that's a very good indicator of supply and demand in the freight Got it. industry. That's beautiful. Yeah. No, that's great. And you know, as, a, as a former founder CEO, and who's also raised money and started a great company and building another one, I know we want to talk about fundraising and going out to capital. Is that something you're doing, want to do, did? Walk us through what that's been like for you. Absolutely. So I am in a fundraising for venture capital now. I have a group of angel investors and I, you know, I'm basically in the series A round of uh, fundraising at this point. Right. And so, yes, um, I have meetings each week. It's a focus of mine right now. Of course, takes money to grow. So, you know, I'm absolutely in that mode right now. So when, when you go, and I, I think you're in, a, in one of the, in a rocket ship space. I mean, I, I think there's so much going on there and I, I think it's going to be a, a great journey for you. And I, I, I'm cheering for you when you go into the VC room and there's so many people in our audience that likes to talking about raising is, is it convoy? Is it Uber freight? Who are you constantly saying, well, Uber freight's doing it or convoy, or is that not the kind of the space you're playing in? Sure. There's a really successful company called Freight Waves okay. in my space. And it's a mix of a software business intelligence and media company. Got it. And I've been on their podcasting uh, four times now. Great. 
And uh, that is a really good model. They've basically, they're looking at all freight movement around the country, rail, truck, inland maritime and coastal maritime, and giving that data up to companies. And the benefit there is, where should I put my warehouses? Where should I stage my trucks? Where should I be based on the actual movement of yeah, freight? Yeah, makes sense. It's a really good model. I'm doing something very similar for the trucking industry in a little different way, right? It's business intelligence for a different output. But that's a that's a company I follow closely and I've gotten to know quite a few of them. And uh, yeah, that's one that I follow. You know, on a I weekend. think it's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think um, the the automation that's going to happen, it, it concerns me about what's going to happen with a lot of the drivers. It's such a big part of the workforce. And I, I just don't know if the answer is learn how to code, but it does concern me about what's going to happen in our lifetime. I, I, I'm not going to say five years. I'm not going to say four years. I'm just going to say in, in my lifetime, I think we're going to see a different type of uh, trucks on the road. I just saw a commercial with uh, Domino's talking about how they're doing autonomous deliveries on their own little automatic cars or autonomous cars. And I just keep on thinking every time I see an auton- autonomous job, that's a job lost, good or bad. Like that's another delivery driver that worked at Domino's that's not going to get that shift. Um, any thoughts on how we can help? What advice we can give people who are thinking about going into that sector that we can say, maybe you should think about doing something else in that sector besides driving? Like, what are your thoughts? Yes, there are. You know, there are a lot of other jobs within the trucking industry, dispatching, um, yeah. you know, freight brokerage, lots of different ones. And the thing about the trucking industry, it's been going on for quite a number of years, yeah. is there's a driver shortage. It's hard to recruit people to do the long haul trucking where you're gone, you know, multiple days at a time. So there's actually been a shortage for a while and a big push for more drivers. They want to sleep in their bed, right? They want to sleep in their bed. Absolutely. They don't want to come back empty. They don't want to go one way. It's, it's yeah. Like the logistics part is crazy. Yeah. And these companies that I work with and have worked with, they've been really creative in creating shorter run routes regionally uh, to help with that. And then the one thing I would say about it is it's going to take time for the infrastructure to electric vehicles and for the technology to catch up to really do autonomous long haul or even regional trucking where i see it happening is short run routes between a port and a warehouse for example you know they call it a cartage the cartage business from ports to warehouses in the area that's probably a, a good place to start with the way the battery technology is right now you lose anywhere from 6,000 to 10,000 pounds per load because of the batteries that you need, right? Yeah. To do an electric truck. So the long haul truckers, the trucking companies themselves are not really ready to jump into that two feet forward and the electricity infrastructure is not there to support that yet. Either. The margins are so, tight. Yeah, the, yeah. You're right. The margins are tight. Right. Um, well, listen, I am... Um, I love talking to CEOs and I also love talking to founders who are raising capital. It's not built for everyone. I think there's a lot of people that says, you know, I want to, I want to run lean. I, I don't want to raise money. I'm in a great space. And I always think that there are certain founders that misunderstand lean versus starvation. We, like you said, you need capital to grow. Venture buys categories. I'm not saying convoy is good or bad, but you raise all that money. You can figure something out. Like it's just it buys you time to innovate and have the space catch up. And then when I look at you know some of the numbers that I'm seeing with with Amazon and shipping and and just the global trade, I absolutely love your space. I've always been a fan of it. One of my first customers that I have ever worked with when I got out of college was Maersk, and I think that's maybe why I have a special spot for you know anything in that 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 sector. Right. Um, right. Well, this is this has been a, a treat. Now we are a community, and I don't know if our community can help get you more customers, but worth a shot, but I can connect you with data scientists and I can connect you with other people in in the sector. I think that's what I can do. And I'd love to do that if that's okay with you. Absolutely. I appreciate that. I'm really interested in speaking with founders and entrepreneurs that have been down the venture capital road. If there's anybody out there, no tips and pitfalls to avoid and so forth. I'm kind of in that mode right now. This is my first time down the venture capital road. So yeah. 
I'm interested in that. Well, I'll connect you a few people and we are, we're absolutely cheering for you. The journey just started. Uh, it's, it's so great. And I'm just, I just like how you kind of are already thinking about it. Like back in 2018, there's a better way to organize a company. There's a better way to communicate. You got ahead of the curve. You're in the right space. You're thinking about the technology. I, you're well on your way. So this is, this is a real treat to meet you. Well, it's a real treat to meet you too. I've enjoyed looking and listening to your podcasts. Was really looking forward to coming yeah. on with you, Darren. So I really appreciate you having me. I love, me. yeah, same. And I, where where do you sit? Uh, Virginia? Is that where you're sitting? Do you see? I'm in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Oh, you're Oklahoma. Why well, I think you were in uh, DC? Okay, you're in Oklahoma. Yes. Because <laughs> I, I heard the accent. I was like, I don't think it's a. So that is uh, not a city I'll be in anytime soon. But if I do, <laughs> I what's <laughs> interesting is I did the relocation or the exodus from San Francisco to Miami. I, when I walk on the beach, I see the freight ships just waiting to pull into the port here and um i was excited to have this conversation and when i saw that boat or that that tanker that what that that shit get stuck in the canal i was like mm -hmm. i have to talk to him about that i mean it's like who gets fired for that like oh boy uh, yeah that was a big one that yeah. affected the global supply chain and so tanker. yeah that was a big yeah. event and it just yeah i mean it just five people can is the crew and i look at some of these these billionaires that have these big yachts and they have like 90 people on the crew and i'm like God, they can take a ship and they can have 25. It's right just, it's amazing how they build um there's just a lot there so i appreciate you being on the show we'll get together soon and we'll, we'll we'll do it over drinks when we ever meet in person and we'll do it the right way sounds great Darren. Thanks i appreciate you having same. me. same this is a great show thanks for being on thank you